pleasant morning to everyone. Welcome to the virtual press conference of the Philippine Statistics Authority for the performance of the Philippine economy in the 2021 fourth quarter held today, January 27, 2022. I am Ange Icardo, your host for this event. Before we start, we would like to inform everyone that we are live streamed on the PSA Facebook page. Updates are also tweeted on the PSA Twitter using the hashtag PHGDP. We are honored today to be joined by our resource persons, Socioeconomic Planning Secretary, Carl Kendrick P. Chua of the National Economic and Development Authority. And from the Philippine Statistics Authority, we have Undersecretary Dennis S. Mata, National Statistician and Civil Registrar General. We would also like to recognize the presence of other NEDA and PSA officials who are joining us today. From NEDA, we have USEC Mercedita Sandia, OIC USEC Roderick Planta, ASEC Carlos Bernardo Abad Santos, ASEC Jonathan L. Uy, and ASEC Greg Neda. From PSA, we would also like to, to recognize Assistant National Statistician Vivian Ilarina of the Macroeconomic Account Service and Deputy National Statistician Attorney Leo Malagar who are joining us online. Now, let us listen to Undersecretary Mapa, who will report on the performance of the Philippine economy for the 2021 fourth quarter. Good morning, everyone. The Philippine Statistics Authority will now report the performance of the Philippine economy for the fourth quarter of 2021 and full year 2021. The Philippine Gross Domestic Product, or GDP, posted a growth rate of 7.7% in the fourth quarter of 2021, a rebound from a decline of negative 8.3% in the fourth quarter of 2020. On an annual basis, 2021 GDP grew by 5.6% from a decline of negative 9.6% in 2020. Net primary income from the rest of the world grew by 15.0%, bringing the gross national income to grow by 8.0% in the fourth quarter of 2021. On an annual basis, net primary income declined by negative 50.2%, while GNI grew by 1.6%. On a seasonally adjusted basis, GDP posted positive quarter-on-quarter -quarter growth rate of 3.1%. On the other hand, GNI recorded a 4.6% quarter-on-quarter growth rate in the fourth quarter of 2021. Among the major economic sectors, agriculture, forestry and fishing, industry and services all posted positive growth rates in the fourth quarter with 1.4%. 9.5% and 7.9% respectively. On an annual basis, industry and services registered positive growth rates of 8.2% and 5.3% respectively. Meanwhile, agriculture, forestry, and fishing posted a contraction of negative 0.3% in 2021. On a seasonally adjusted basis, all major industries posted positive quarter-on-quarter -quarter growth rates during the fourth quarter of 2021. Agriculture, forestry, and fishing grew by 1.3%, while industry and services grew by 4.3% and 2.8%, respectively. During the fourth quarter of 2021, per capita GDP grew by 6.3%, from a decline of negative 9.5% in the same quarter of the previous year. Likewise, per capita GNI and per capita household final consumption expenditure also posted growth rates of 6.6% and 6.1% respectively. On an annual basis, per capita GDP, GNI and household final consumption expenditure all posted positive growth rates of 4.2%, 0.3%, and 2.9% respectively. 
with the GDP growth of 7.7% in the fourth quarter of 2021, services contributed the highest with 4.6 percentage points. This was followed by industry with 2.9 percentage points and agriculture, forestry, and fishing, which contributed 0.2 percentage point. On an annual basis, services and industry contributed 3.2 percentage points and 2.4 percentage points respectively. Meanwhile, agriculture, forestry, and fishing contributed minus 0.03 percentage point in 2021. Among the 16 major industries of GDP, other services like arts, entertainment, and recreation posted the highest growth rate with 30.1% during the fourth quarter of 2021. This was followed by accommodation and food service activities with 22.8%, construction with 18.5%, and transportation and storage with 18.2%. On an annual basis, human health and social work activities posted the highest growth rate with 15.0%. This was followed by construction with 9.8%, information and communication with 9.1%, and manufacturing with 8.6%. The major contributors of GDP growth in the fourth quarter of 2021 were manufacturing with 1.5 percentage points, wholesale and retail trade, repair of motorcycles and motor vehicles, 1.4 percentage points, and construction with 1.3 percentage points. On an annual basis, the major contributors were manufacturing with 1.6 percentage points, wholesale and retail trade, repair of motor vehicles and motorcycles with 0.8 percentage point, and construction with 0.6 percentage point. On the demand side, volumes posted the highest growth rate with 60.4% during the fourth quarter of 2021. This was followed by intellectual property products with 17.9%, construction with 15.0%, and imports of goods with 14.5%. On an annual basis, imports of goods posted the highest growth rate with 17.9%, and this was followed by intellectual property products with 14.1%, durable equipment with 11.9%, and exports of goods with 11.6%. For the fourth quarter of 2021, major contributors to the growth of the GDP from the expenditure side were the following. Household final consumption expenditure with 5.7 percentage points, construction with 1.8 percentage points, and government final consumption expenditure with 1.0 percentage point. On an annual basis, the major contributors were the following household final consumption expenditure with 3.1 percentage points construction with 1.3 percentage points and government final consumption expenditure with 1.1 percentage points. The Philippine Statistics Authority appreciates your presence in the fourth quarter national accounts press conference. We look forward to meeting you again on the 12th of May, 2022, when we report the performance of the Philippine economy for the first quarter of 2022. Thank you very much and good morning. Thank you very much, Under Secretary Mapa. Now, to deliver the joint statement of the economic managers on the Philippine economic performance 
for the 2021 fourth quarter, we have Socioeconomic Planning Secretary, Carl Kendrick P. Chua of the National Economic and Development Authority. Colleagues in government, friends from the media, fellow Filipinos, good morning. The door to our economic recovery is now fully open. The numbers for 2021 show an economy primed to break out. In the second quarter, we saw a reversal from a temporary downturn as the economy expanded by 12%. By ramping up our vaccination program and allowing more sectors to open, we sustained our recovery and still grew by 6.9% in the third quarter amid the surge from the Delta variant. In the last quarter, we, we further calibrated our strategies by shifting to the alert level system with granular lockdowns. Our efforts to safely reopen the economy allowed more Filipinos to work and earn their income. In November of 2021, the unemployment rate declined to 6.5%, the lowest since the start of the pandemic. This led to a net employment creation of 2.9 million above pre-pandemic levels. Our strategies in 2021 have culminated in a full-year growth that exceeded targets and expectations. The Philippine economy grew by 7.7% year-on-year in the fourth quarter of 2021. On a seasonally adjusted quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, the economy also expanded by 3.1%. This growth performance was much faster than most analysts forecast, making the country's expansion among the highest in the region. This sends a strong signal that we are on track to rapid recovery despite the impact of Typhoon Odette. The robust fourth quarter expansion brings full year 2021 GDP growth to 5.6%. This exceeds the Development Budget Coordination Committee's target of 5 to 5.5%. This sustained growth was driven by the successful management of risks, such as targeting the areas with highest risk and allowing the rest of the economy to open. Our policies to move from a pandemic to a more endemic paradigm have led to broad-based expansions across almost all sectors, despite challenges brought about by the continued persistence of COVID-19, various levels of quarantines, and prevalence of natural disasters. For the full year 2021, the industry and services sectors grew by 8.2% and 5.3% respectively, representing a strong rebound from the contractions experienced by these sectors in 2020. The agriculture sector, however, experienced a slight decline of 0.3%. This was brought about by the challenges the sector continued to face, such as the African swine fever and super typhoons, which affected agricultural production. On the expenditure side, private consumption grew by 4.2%, a stark reversal from 2020's minus 7.9%. This indicates returning consumer confidence as a result of relaxed quarantine restrictions and the accelerated vaccination program. Government expenditure also expanded by 7%. Meanwhile, external trade recovered at a faster pace in 2021. Exports grew by 7.8% compared to minus 16.3% in the same period uh, two years ago. The same trend can be seen in imports with a sustained growth of 12.9% in 2021, compared to minus 21.6% in 2020. Moreover, investments recorded a robust growth of 19%, rebounding from minus 34.4% in 2020. This was supported by a 37.4% growth in public construction as the government proceeded full steam ahead with the implementation of the Build, Build, Build infrastructure program. The strong 2021 performance shows us that we are on the correct path to a resilient recovery. The stage is now set forth 
for growth to accelerate in 2022. Although COVID-19 risk increased at the beginning of the year due to the highly transmissible Omicron variant, we were able to limit severe cases and deaths relative to the total number of cases because of our accelerated vaccination program and improvements in our healthcare system. With the shortened interval for booster shots and the expansion of the vaccination program to children aged 5 to 11 years old starting this February, more Filipinos can avail of these life-saving doses. When approvals are available, the government also aims to expand vaccination program to those aged 0 to 4 years old. All of these will enable the safe and full reopening of the economy allowing more Filipinos to work and earn a living and restarting all face-to-face -face learning. We are optimistic that we will not only recover to the pre-pandemic level in 2022, but achieve the upper middle income country status. We have put in place several game-changing reforms throughout the Duterte administration, and we will not slow down in these final months. We will continue to pursue structural reforms that will make the country more resilient against future crises and solidify our growth prospects. We thank Congress for passing the amendments to the Retail Trade Liberalization Act and the Foreign Investment Act. To complete the economic liberalization reforms, we reiterate the urgent need to finalize the bicameral conference approval and passage of the amendments to the Public Service Act before Congress adjourns this February. This landmark legislation will open up key sectors, including telecommunications and transportation to foreign investment subject to the necessary safeguards. By doing this, it will create more meaningful employment opportunities, enhance innovation, lower prices, and improve the quality of goods and services for all Filipinos. Moreover, we strongly support the proposed Livestock Development and Competitiveness Bill to help improve the efficiency and competitiveness of the whole value chain for the livestock, poultry, and dairy sectors. Preliminary Senate hearings have been held to propose a measure that is more responsive to the needs of these subsectors especially to improve the productivity and income of backyard racers and to address high prices of these products. We look forward to continuously working with our legislators to ensure the passage of a bill that will not only help improve agricultural productivity and increase the income of farmers, but will also address the food security and lead to more affordable prices of protein-rich food for all 100 10 million Filipinos. Lastly, as we recover, we need to improve our productivity and innovate to ensure that our development goals are inclusive and sustainable. The implementation of the Philippine Innovation Act will improve innovation governance, create a culture of futures planning to achieve the country's long-term innovation priorities, and provide support to Filipino innovators. This will be crucial in reaching an upper middle income country status and sustaining our growth to attain high income country status in one generation. The Duterte administration will stay the course until its last hour in office. We remain committed to rebuilding a stronger economy and delivering on our promise to provide a comfortable life for everyone. We owe it to our future generation to create a society that is better, healthier, and safer than the one we find ourselves in today. With the right policies and reforms, we can achieve this vision for the country. Let us work together to turn this vision into a reality for every Filipino. Thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary Chua. Now, before we start the open forum, we are pleased to welcome our media partners joining us today via video conferencing. Your press kits will be, the, will be provided to you via email. Before we begin the Q&A portion, please allow me first to give some instructions so that we have an organized flow. 
we will prioritize the questions sent to us in advance by our media partners organized by topic. Then, depending on the remaining time that we have, perhaps our resource persons can still accommodate the questions live. To our media partners joining live, you may send your questions through the Zoom chat box in which the host will first acknowledge your name and organization, followed by your question. Another option is to ask the question directly to the resource persons. To do so, please use the raise hand feature of Zoom, then wait for the host to acknowledge you before you state your question. Okay, let's begin with the first question. Uh, this is addressed to Secretary Chua. Uh, Ms. Pilar Patrice Manuel of CNN Philippines is asking, to what extent did Typhoon Odette impact the economy in the fourth quarter? And how much did the affected areas contribute to the economic output? Uh, thank you very much for your question. We are basing this estimate uh, from the NDRRMC's latest situational report dated the 23rd of January. Uh, in that report, the estimated total damages and losses is around 33.4 billion. This is 0.17% uh, of our GDP. Now, in terms of the impact, to growth, our initial estimate based on this report is uh, full year GDP growth was reduced by around 0.05 percentage points due to Typhoon Odette. Um, we are now in the stage where we are preparing the post disaster need assessment and the uh, various uh, regional recovery programs, uh, which we hope to complete by the end of the month so that we can accelerate the uh, recovery of these affected regions. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Chua. The next question is from Ms. Eileen Mencias of Avante, addressed to NS MAPA. May we have the growth numbers on private, private investments for the fourth quarter and the full year 2021, please? Thank you very much, uh, Eileen. Uh, what, what we have uh, from our data uh, would be the private construction because uh, this is the uh, uh, industry where we have a disaggregation uh, between private and public. And uh, I will uh, share with you the uh, quarter four 2021 growth rate at constant prices for uh, private construction that is 9.3%. And this is estimated to be about 418 billion at uh, 2018 constant prices. However, on an annual basis for the full year 2021, uh, this uh, uh, drop no, uh, uh, year on year, the growth rate is uh, minus 2%. And the uh, uh, amount is uh, estimated to be about 1.48 trillion at constant prices. Thank you. Thank you very much, NS Mapa. The next question is again from Ms. Eileen Mencias. Uh, this is for Secretary Chua. Is the growth sustainable given that much of it was due to a low base, taking the private investment growth numbers into the account and deceleration in government spending? Well, what we have seen in 2021 is a change in our policy from uh, uh, imposing area-wide quarantines or lockdowns to a more granular approach and more risk-based approach. We allowed most of the economy to open in the fourth quarter of 2021 and targeted the restrictions on the four Cs, uh, meaning those uh, where you find crowds, close contacts, and closed spaces. And uh, this has resulted in a higher GDP uh, uh, outturn compared to the analyst estimate for the second half of 2021. So uh, this uh, shows that our policy is uh, right uh, we have allowed the economy to open. Cases actually fell as we opened the economy prior to the Omicron. And uh, we will continue to see this uh, trend, I believe, in 2022. So the growth is sustainable. And we believe there is an opening for us to uh, see a lower alert level in the coming weeks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary Chua. The next question is from Naomi Terbush of PPV, addressed to Secretary Carl. What are the economic outcomes if NCR is relaxed to alert level 2 in February? And what is the outcome if alert level 3 is retained? Uh, well, uh, you know, we are uh, monitoring three indicators uh, in the IATF. 
Uh, and based on those indicators, uh, they will determine the alert level outcome. So we are measuring the average daily attack rate. We are measuring the two-week growth rate, and we are measuring the hospital uh, capacity. Uh, in the NCR region, we have seen a significant decline in cases. I understand less than 20% of total cases are coming from NCR now. In fact, we have a negative uh, growth rate. Uh, our two-week growth rate, I believe, is uh, 3%. Our hospital care capacity is uh, 45%, of which only 10% are admitted due to COVID, and 90% are admitted due to some other diseases, and when they test the person, uh, for instance, for their uh, appendicitis or for their heart problems, uh, they happen to have COVID. So these are good indicators uh, that uh, alert level, the lowering of alert level is imminent in the coming weeks. Uh, when we do a shifting uh, from alert level three to alert level two, for instance, in the NCR plus area, we can expect a 3 billion per week improvement in our uh, uh, gross value added. Uh, and uh, if we continue this trend and address the remaining risk, uh, it is likely also that we see a lower alert level, such as alert level one in the coming months. Thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary Chua. The next question is addressed to NS Mata. This is from Mr. Ben Devera of Inquirer. Mr. Ben is asking, may we ask for nominal GDP in 2019, 2020, and 2021? Okay, thank you very much, Ben. Uh, for uh, nominal GDP, 2021, uh, the full year is estimated at uh, 19.387 trillion. And for 2020, uh, this is 17.939 trillion. For 2019, this is 19.518 trillion. So again, 2021, 19.387 trillion. 2020, 17.939 trillion. And 2019, 19.518 trillion. So if we compare 2021 versus 2019 uh, current prices, uh, we are down by about 131 billion or uh, estimated 0.7%. Thank you. Thank you very much, NS Mapa. Uh, Mr. Ben has a follow up question addressed to Secretary Chua. How is the government bracing for the impact of the expected over four US Fed rate hikes this year, elevated global inflation, and lingering global supply chain issues, which may spill over to the domestic economy? On the uh, global inflation risk, uh, there are a couple of things that uh, we should bear in mind. Uh, the first one is uh, mitigating the impact through our uh, social protection programs. And we have in place, as we have seen in the past uh, months, uh, subsidies, for instance, to public utility vehicles and our continuing program to address other transportation concerns, such as allowing a higher capacity so that the sectors can earn more and offset any increase in, uh, for instance, increase in prices. Now, the second uh, uh, possible uh, inflation risk is uh, the global increase in food prices. We are addressing this with the present reforms that we have, including uh, providing more support to our rice uh, sector through the Rice Competitiveness Enhancement Fund. As you know, all the tariffs that are collected are provided to support the sector, improve productivity. And as you have seen in the report uh, today, the rice sector uh, grew strongly uh, in, uh, even, even during uh, this uh, period. Uh, we are working, as I mentioned in my uh, opening statement, uh, a bill uh, to improve the productivity of the livestock, poultry, and dairy sector so that uh, the farmers are supported uh, to improve their productivity while the consumers are supported with lower prices. Thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary Chua. The next question is addressed to both our resource persons. This is from Mr. Warren de Guzman of ANC. How will inflation impact GDP growth moving forward? We are now seeing elevated oil prices as demand rises. 
Is it possible inflation will increase here as we all as well as local demand rises in step with easing mobility restrictions? Uh, let me begin by saying we are a very diversified economy. And uh, despite the projected increase in global oil prices, uh, we are still maintaining our 2 to 4% inflation target for this year. And there are other ways to mitigate, as I mentioned, the overall inflation, including passage of several uh, bills and measures to contain food prices, which is the most important that we are watching right now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary Chua. And Esmapa, do you have something to add? For? Thank you very much, uh, Warren. Um, for, for PSA, uh, we, we are uh, tracking uh, the uh, prices from our uh, uh, outlets. As I uh, mentioned in my uh, uh, previous press conference for uh, inflation, we are shifting to a 2018 base year starting uh, 2022. And uh, we will be reporting the January uh, 2022 inflation uh, on the 4th of February. So we will see. Uh, the uh, the impact of uh, prices of oil. Thank you. Thank you very much, NS Mata. The next question is from Mr. Ted Cordero of GMA News Online. Uh, this is for NS Mata. How much is the peso value of the full year 2021 GDP? He also has several follow-up questions. The first is, how far is it compared to 2019 pre-pandemic level? Are you confident that we can surpass pre-pandemic levels this year? Um, I think I answered this already. Uh, I mentioned, and I will just repeat the numbers. Uh, for current prices, 2021 uh, GDP is uh, 19.387 trillion. And uh, if we compare this to 2019, uh, it is 19.518 trillion. So the, the gap between uh, 2021 and 2019, the pre-pandemic, is just about 131 billion or 0 0.7% of the 2019 level. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. And as Mata, um, Mr. Ted Cordero has a question for Secretary Chua. Secretary, are you confident we can surpass the pre-pandemic levels this year? Well, we are uh, very close to the pre-pandemic level at the end of 2021. Uh, uh, if you look at the nominal levels, uh, it's almost the same. Uh, we are just, I think, a few hundred billions uh, short. So we are uh, fully going to surpass it in 2022. Thank you, Secretary Thank you. Tua. Okay, our next question is from July Rada of Manila Standard. This is for Secretary Chua. How much was the contribution of the NCR to the 2021 GDP? taking into account the shifts in the alert levels in the region? Uh, well, the regional GDP is not yet released, so we, we have to wait for that. But uh, in general, uh, the NCR area, I understand, uh, contributes around a third, uh, but the NS Dennis can verify, uh, I think around a third to total GDP. Uh, we will have to await the regional GDP for the exact numbers. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Secretary. Uh, the uh, previous uh, 2020 uh, uh, GDP, NCR contributed 32% uh, of the uh, overall GDP. And uh, for the regional GDP, the Philippine Statistics Authority will report it on April 28th. Thank you. Thank you, NS Mapa. Thank you, you uh, Secretary Chua. The next question is a follow-up by uh, Mr. Ben Devera of Inquirer. Addressed to Secretary Carl, uh, on U.S. Fed hikes, if these may impact on our investment and capital flows? Uh, that, that is possible. Uh, the mon Monetary Board is looking at that, uh, I believe, closely and will make the necessary uh, actions as needed. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Chua. We have a live question from Mr. Dreo Calonzo of Bloomberg. Mr. Dreo, you are recognized. Hi, good morning, Sec Secretary Chua. Uh, sir, um, can you give us an outlook on the extent of the uh, impact of the Omicron surge to our economy, perhaps in the first quarter? So um, if, if you go to the malls now, there's not much foot traffic. So do, when do you see the consumption, I mean, the 
the consumption recovering again? Is it as soon as next month or? Uh, so thank you, uh, Dreo. Uh, you know, we are uh, seeing negative growth rates already in NCR. So it went uh, up very fast, uh, but it's also going down very fast. And other countries that experience Omicron also experience the same. So it appears that this is a, uh, a spike that is uh, of a very temporary uh, nature. Uh, what is good about this spike is that most people uh, in NCR, for instance, and leading areas are vaccinated. And although the cases went up, uh, as the data have shown, uh, the severe critical and deaths are way, way, way lower uh, compared to, for instance, the Delta surge. So I think uh, there is an opening for us to lower the alert level in the coming weeks. Uh, we are still on track for our full year growth. Uh, um, uh, achieving our full year growth uh, so long as we uh, fully um, go back to alert level two or lower uh, in by the end of this quarter. Thank you. So, but how will the consumers go back to the mall? Uh, they, well, they, uh, they go back once they feel they are healthy and the risks are lower. And we are seeing that in the NCR area. But, sir, in November, before this Omicron surge, you mentioned that uh, we can return to pre-pandemic level nominal GDP as early as the first, first quarter. So this quarter, does that yes. stand? Uh, yes, as I mentioned, uh, by the mm -hmm. end of 2021, uh, we are almost uh, hitting the pre-pandemic level, short mm -hmm. by a few, I think, uh, 100 billion. So we, we will surely hit it in the first quarter. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Chua, Mr. Dreo. Our next question is from Mr. Warren de Guzman of ANC addressed to Secretary Chua. What is the position of the economic team on local monetary policy? She also has follow-up question. Local what? Sorry? Local monetary policy. Oh, we defer to the monetary board on that. Okay. Uh, that is their uh, mandate to determine monetary policy. Thank you, Secretary Chua. Uh, he has a follow-up question. Should the BSP move in step with U.S. Fed hikes? Uh, again, that is for monetary board to determine the pros and cons of uh, adjusting rates. Okay. Thank you, Secretary Chua. Uh, he has another question. How long would you prefer monetary policy to stay at current levels? Uh, I think the monetary board will have some uh, good answer to that. Thank you, Secretary Chua. Okay, uh, it seems that is our last question. We would like to thank our resource person, Socioeconomic Planning Secretary Carl Kendrick P. Chua, and Under Secretary Dennis S. Mapa, National Statistician and Civil Registrar General. We also would like to thank officials from NEDA and PSA and our media partners for joining us in this press briefing. Once again, I'm Anjay Tarda from PSA, wishing you all a good day ahead. Thank you.